Welcome back. Exercise 18, Creo Parametric 7.0. In this exercise, we re-look at uh, family tables inside Creo. Now, a couple exercises ago, exercise 16, we actually took an existing part and we made some changes to it. It was a ratchet. We changed the length of the handle, the length of the neck, and then made a machined versus non-machined part. Now we're going to build a part from scratch today and we're going to also learn how to drop in those variants of that part into a drawing like you see here. So we're going to start off, and I kept the model very simple so you could just grasp how to design it and, and we're going to talk about the design intent when making the design table as well, which we didn't discuss that last time. But here you can see it's a very simple block. Um, there's a small version. There's a medium-sized version, there's a large version, there's even one that has no hole in it, which I didn't display on here. But um, with that, we can make this family of parts, and we'll also take a look at the whole wizard again. And uh, let's begin. Start off with a new part, and go ahead and label this E18. Hit OK. We're going to start by generating the rear, the the mid-sized one. So go ahead and let's select the front plane and go to extrude. Go to corner rectangle and you'll notice I have all of my planes turned off because I'm just selecting them from the model tree. But I'm going to go to the center origin here, the crosshairs. When I get the blue dot, click, drag out a rectangle, make sure there's no equals. So click and it'll click twice. Now these dimensions, it's going to be 5 inches wide by 3 inches in height, and you could hit refit, and if you want, you could even squeeze those in a bit further and refit it once again. All right, now the design intent when you're working on designing the part, knowing that there's going to be families of parts associated with this, uh, you, you want to leave out things, like for example, um, the old exercise I had was actually just a very simple hole. It was just a simple through hole, an extrude with a circle cut through. Um, now what I would have is students who kind of moved ahead and just, they would design it in right now. They'd actually go to the circle tool, draw in the hole, knowing that it's a through hole and it's a consistent size, they would go and they'd extrude it. Then later on when they tried to have the, ver the two versions of this, which you have one with the hole and one without, finally couldn't do it. When they tried to suppress that hole, it suppressed the whole model, and that was because it was built inside the context of the, the part itself. So you have to break those out into separate features. So with this one, we'll just start with a very basic rectangle here. Hit OK, and it's going to be two inches thick, and hit OK. Now we're going to go to the hole tool here, select that and let's go to standard and we're going to go with counter bore and as uh, see here uh, let's go ahead and click on the surface now we could um, go to the shape and specify additional parameters here and but first of all let's go ahead and grab this little See that little shape? Drag it to this edge. And this little shape here, drag it to this edge. This is for locating it. And now you'll see it will actually update with the parameters that we wanted here. So um, at this point, go ahead and have it offset one inch off of both of these edges. And we've seen this before and how to use this, but it was on a cylindrical surface prior to this. So this is on a rectangular surface. And um, you could see as far as the standards here, if we go to predefined, actually, uh, no, we do want standard. Okay, what I was looking for. Um, if you have an option here for the the thread, actually, let me see. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, that's, yeah, here we go. Click on standard here. My mistake. Okay, so uh, we want UNC, but notice there's ISO, UNF. Um, instead of uh, 164, let's go with a 3 quarter 10. And that's going to include the thread in there too. Now, as far as the depth goes, you see it's going through that. And that's uh, we have that set up. You could go to shape 
and actually see the parameters here. We have 1.575, and this is a two inch deep hole. That's after the base there. So we could actually specify that not to be quite so deep. So let's actually go with 1.25. Okay, and I'm not sure if mine's not updating properly. Uh, that might not be, but uh, let's go ahead and hit the green check. And it didn't update the way I thought it would, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and edit that again. And so we got the 3 quarter 10, the shape. I guess I'm going to go with 1 inch. For some odd reason, that's not updating here. But we could actually, I guess we could grab this. So I'm not sure why that's not updating, but this is what we need to grab. And actually, this is what we want. So 1.5 is fine there. OK, and hit the OK button. And you can see it actually puts in the information for a note. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our family of parts. So now that we have this, let's go to save and save it to your desktop or wherever you want. Now we're going to go ahead and go to tools and family table. Now when you select family table, uh, the look in E18, that's fine. Hit this little button right here, insert new instance. We'll go with one, two, three, and four. Now the first instance here, we'll keep it E18 as the prefix, you might say, and we'll call this the large. Now this next one above that, this will be the medium, or MED underscore no underscore hole. And then one after that is just MED. And the one after that is going to be small. And you can name these anything, quite honestly. All right, now we're going to go ahead and click on the Add Delete Table Columns, and it should bring this box up. Now, the first thing we're looking for are the dimensions. Um, ah, you know, we could actually do the feature first. Let's click on the feature and select the surface of the hole, and it should drop that feature in. Now you could go to Dimension, select this face, and proceed. Let's go with the 5-inch dimension, which is the width, so click on that. Go with the three inch dimension, which is the height, and the two inch dimension is the depth. And now we have our features. And again, we're keeping this kind of simple, actually very simple, so uh, you could grasp the concept. Hit OK. And now we could enter the value. So for the hole here, we have uh, the small one, definitely we want the hole, so select Y for yes. The medium select yes but then there's a medium no hole so obviously we would select n for no and you could type this in as well you don't have to use this little drop down and then the large will have a hole so we'll hit yes now the very first instance we have is the original and i like to keep that but uh depending upon the organization you work with if they have a plm system or pdm system or that tracks these they might have a different way of dealing with that I like keeping the original there just in case, and it's going to make these other parts on top of that. So the small is actually a 3 instead of 5, and the medium is 5, the medium no hole is 5, and the large is going to be 8. Now click on D1, which was the height, so that uh, this one, the small is going to be 2. The medium will be 3, which is basically the, the default 3 for the medium no hole. And then the extra or the large is going to be 5. Now the thickness, they're all going to be 2 with the exception of the large. We'll go up to 3 inches with that. Now you can verify this. And if you get success, you've done it correctly. Go ahead and close that and hit OK. Now, we're going to go ahead and paint that red there just so we can see a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to do this, but you can paint it in any color you like. Actually, I'll go with um, green this time. And we'll go to uh, Surface, and we can Control-Select some of these surfaces here, and then it'll click. 
All right, so we've uh, colored the hole. Now we're going to go ahead and bring this into a drawing, but let's make sure our dimensions are laid out so they look pretty good. Middle click a couple times. I'll look at that later. All right, now we're going to go ahead and uh, save it again. And let's now go to File, New, Drawing, and hit OK. Now we saw last time in exercise 16 when we created that, it automatically created those other additional parts for us. They're actually in the same location where we saved our E18 part. Um, so it's really good actually, probably I should have made a folder ahead of time, but um, I was a little lazy there. All right, so now we have the default model. What do we want to use as this? So browse, we don't want the original, but you can see it's listed here and we have the E18. We're going to go with the E18 uh, small to start off with. So E18 small, and you'll see it listed. Hit OK. And it's going to be on an uh, empty with format, browse, and select the A format. I'm curious what these look like, IDX. OK, now we'll just stick with the A format and hit open and hit OK. Now in the lower left you'll see scale. Let's adjust that. Double click on scale here and let's make it um, half scale. All right, uh, you know we might actually make that smaller. Let's double click on that. Let's make a quarter scale, so 0.25. All right, now we could start dropping in the part. So we'll go to general view, hit OK, click over here and you can see the part. Now we actually want the front. Now normally I would have you make uh, this not shaded, but we're going to leave this one shaded, at least for the front view, and then the top view will actually go with hidden lines. So with that being said, we could go ahead and hit uh, OK. Let's put the dimension in there, so we could go to Annotate, Show Model Items, and you'll see the dimensions will appear. We're just looking for the see here the three inch and the two inch and you can select those two and hit okay we don't need all the other dimensions and this is why it's not a bad idea to position these ahead of time okay go to layout and turn off lock view well, actually mine was off sorry now I can click and we can relocate that all right I think the dimensions are okay there so let's now move on to let's unfold the part out there go click on that go to projected view click up here and then double click on that and we want that to be in the view, uh, view display let's actually see that one hidden out this is not by the way how you would make a drawing necessarily with uh, shaded and hidden I'm just doing this for the sake of this lesson most of you have already taken our drawing class and know that that's probably a considered a no-no but the reason I did that was so this you can actually see this now click on this and let's go back to annotate and show dimensions click on the two hit OK now if we want the center mark there go back to show and then go over here to the datum and select this hole and then select the actual center mark hit OK. Okay, I'm going to move this up a little bit. And we can move that these dimensions in if we like. Alright, so we have our first one done here. Let's move on to the next. Now what you need to do, you go to the layout if you want to add these other ones in here. You have to go to Draw Models. <clears throat> and we want to add models. So click on Add Models. And let's make sure we click on the Medium. Okay, click on Add Models again. I, I wonder if we could hold Control. I've never tried it. Let's see. We want uh, Medium, No Hole, and Large. Uh, no, it won't let us do it. So it looks like we can only do one at a time. Go to Add Model. And let's just get all these. You don't have to get them all at the same time, but you can. I'm going to hit OK. Now, what that does is it loads them up. And so when you go to Set Model, you'll see the ones that you selected are listed there. So now we could actually say, let's go with the E18 medium, hit done and return, go to general view, hit OK, click right over here, and let's go ahead and set that one. Now for some reason, 
the scale has gone to point. Oh no, that, that's correct, 0.5. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to view display. I'm sorry. Um, go to view type. And we want front. And you know what? This one's the wrong size. I just realized that. I'm not sure. I've seen that phenomena happen before. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was the default that I picked initially when I opened up the drawing. I bet that's what it is. It was still in the memory buffer. So um, I'm going to hit OK here and locate that. And I'm going to change. Let's see. Uh, if we double click on this, go to scale. Yeah, the scale was, uh, even though it's at the default scale of 0.25, that was the initial default scale before we changed it. So let's make that 0.5. And we could delete this scale. We don't really need that one in there. Um, wasn't intended. And then we could move the dimension over, make it look a little bit better. Okay, now let's click and unfold the view here. There is the quick launch, which gives you that option. Just drop it right there. Click, and you can double click. And let's go to view display and just make sure that's set to hidden. Okay, and we'll just put the large in now. And I think we're going to run out of space, it looks as though. Um, so we'll move far over as we can. Get some of these over. All right, now let's go to Drawing Models and sol uh, Set Model, and this time go with the E18 Large. Hit Done, General View, hit OK, click right over here, and we'll go to Scale. All right, oh, that's interesting. Okay, this uh, scale is confusing me, I think. All right, so let's go to... Um, custom there. We'll go to 0.5 and view type. Let's double click on front. Hit OK. And I bet if I would have done this in a different order I wouldn't have this issue. All right now I'm going to click on this and we'll go to project. Drop that up there. Double click and go to view display again and hit all right, now to bring the dimensions in for those, let's first move these over again. We're going to run them out of space here. So we could now just go to annotate. We could have done this all together. I kind of wasted some time here. My apologies for that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and select. Um, that was for the center marks. But let's go ahead and control select all these views. And right here, you'll see, since we selected those, we could just hit check them all to leave those on. Apply. Now let's go to the datums. Select the holes. Holding control. Check both of those. Hit apply. And then you can cancel out. All right. So you can see here, we now have all these assigned. I'm running out of room a little bit here, but from the drawing, size we could scale it down okay and so that basically if you want one more in here like an isometric view let's go back to layout go to drawing models and this time set model and let's go with the small because now we could go the small or I should say the medium done and then general view hit OK and just click right there and we'll actually scale this considerably smaller so 0 0.25 let's get rid of that all right and so anyhow I've made some mistakes with the scale there I probably should have set that up earlier but you could see here how we could actually make a variety of parts and then show them all in one drawing. And this concludes exercise 18.